Hey everybody, and welcome to the last tutorial of this year. Of course, this is definitely not the absolutely final tutorial, as I will continue with a new batch of learning materials in January. So, how are we ending the year 2024? We will be implementing blobby objects, also known as metaballs. Yes, exactly what you see on the screen right now. So, let's get started. Although this effect may seem quite complex, its calculation is surprisingly simple and will only take up two lines of code. The rest of the code will be dedicated to defining the individual balls and trajectories of their movement. So I'll create a new scene, right click, uh, create a new scene and call it Meta Balls. Okay. And this time we'll be working with the usual color act. So let's add child node, color act, and in the inspector I will set in layout transform size to 600 by 400. And let's scroll down to the material section and I will create a new shader material. Click it, create new shader, call it Metaballs GD shader, mode canvas item, and I'll put it to the shaders folder as well. Create. Click again to open it in the editor. Okay, let's expand that very well. So, where do we start? Of course, we start with deleting everything we don't need. So, let me delete the vertex function and the eh, shit, light function. And now, since we want nice round balls and not some squashed shapes, we need to take into account that we are working on a rectangle. So the first parameter we'll define is its dimensions, which we will then use to calculate the aspect ratio. After all, I've used this calculation in almost every video. Uh, uniform vec2 resolution is vec2 and let's set it to our rectangle 600 by 400. Ok, next we will want to color our balls, so the second parameter will define the color in RGB format. Uniform Vec3 color, source color to get the color picker in the inspector and the default value let's set to uh, 0 0.3.9, which would be some shade of blue I suppose. And finally, we would like to control the overall speed of the movement for these elements. The last parameter will be called speed. Uniform float speed. Again with a hint range and let's set it to 0.5 for start from 0 to 1 and 0 0.01 as the, as the step. As we noticed at the beginning of the video, there were some irregularity in the movements of the individual balls, which came from the different parameters for each instance. Therefore, it will be beneficial to create a custom structure for this purpose, which we will call MetaBall, and we will define it this way. Struct MetaBall and... Uh, sorry. Okay, semicolon, and now the... Properties, float radius, float frac, and float amp. So what this radius, I think it's clear, it's just radius of the ball we want to display on the screen, and frequency and amplitude will be related <coughs> to their trajectories, because we'll be using trigonometric functions to keep the balls within the range of our rectangle. So that's how we'll define that. Alright, now we will uh, create specific instances of this structure. Since they uh, will not change during the calculations, I will add them as a constant array. To start, we will create one metaball and later we will add more. So that would be const metaball and array. Let's call it balls and this array would currently contain just one uh, member meta ball with these parameters 
for example, 0.2 for the radius, 2 for the frequency, and 0.9 for the amplitude. Uh, no, this is correct. Okay, what's next? We need a function that will return a value based on whether a specific pixel belongs to the area of influence of any metaball. The function looks like this. Uh, float ball parameters vector 2 uv coordinates of the pixel and float radius of the particular ball okay and there is a simple formula return radius divided by dot product of uv and uv okay great We've done, we are done with the setup. We can finally write the fragment function and display something. I'll start, as I mentioned earlier, by recalculating the coordinates for the given aspect ratio so that we end up with uh, nice round balls. Uh, vec2 uv is uv minus 0.5 this time. Again, we'll be uh, moving the origin of coordinates to the center of the rectangle because we want the balls to rotate around the center so it will make the calculations easier for us. And we'll recalculate um, the coordinates for the aspect ratio this way. UVX is multiplied by resolution X divided by resolution Y. Now, uh, we will calculate the individual balls and add them to the result. Since in this case, instead of adding, we multiply to correctly determine the attraction of pixels to the metaballs and achieve that typical blob effect, we won't start from zero, but from one. Float result is one. Okay, in the following loop, we will calculate the movement of each ball using trigonometric functions and their frequency and amplitude parameters. The balls will move in a regular circle. So this would be the algorithm for int i from 0 to number of balls, so balls and length, the length of the balls array, i++. plus plus. Let's just define the metaball B as the current member on the current index from the array to save some space. And now let's calculate the offset regarding its trajectory. Offset would be vector 2 and equals, sorry, vector 2. And now let's put it to multiple lines because it's going to be a bit longer. Sign time multiplied by b frequency and multiplied by speed and now multiplying by the amplitude amp and let's do the same for the second coordinate but this time we'll use cosine okay and it would be the same times b frac times speed multiplied by b amp all right and we can assign the result to the result and as i said we'll be multiplying not adding so result is multiplied uh, multiplied by the function ball with uv coordinates increased by the offset for the movement and the radius of the current ball perfect and finally, we will color our result with the desired color. So color is vector 4 applied on our result multiplied by color, which is our infant parameter and one for the alpha value. Wait for it. Okay, we can see the first metaball swirling on the screen. However, it seems to be slipping out of view. So let's change the scale to double or maybe half. I'm not sure. Let's just multiply the UV coordinates by 2. So that would be right here. 
UV is multiplied by 2. Wait, that's much better. It's time to add more balls. I will gradually add them to the array until we have 4, just like at the beginning of the video. So let's just do this. Meta ball and 0 0.3, 2 0.5, 0 0.5, second one, now we have two. Let's, oh, I think we can just do this. Meta ball, the third one would be 0 0.4, 1 0.5 and 0.6. And finally, Meta ball. 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.7. Okay, the effect looks good, but there is a small issue. All the metaballs are swirling in the same direction, so the result is still more regular than we would like. We'll fix this by setting the y coordinate of the offset vector in the opposite direction for every second metaball. We will add a variable there for direction, which will alternate between the values negative 1 and 1. So let's do it here. Uh, float there. And for alternation, we can use the modulo. So float i modulo 2, which gives us values 0 and 1. So to uh, project them to negative 1 and 1, we need to multiply by 2, which gives us two, uh, 0 and 2, and now if we subtract 1, it is exactly negative 1 and 1. And we will apply it like this. Let's use the second coordinate and multiply that by there. Okay, it's not perfect, but I quite like the result. Of course, we can create more complex constructions for the movement of the metaballs, but that's not the focus of this video. And if the resulting color of the combined ball seems too bright, we can add a switch between the current state and a more evenly colored version. For this, I will define a parameter which I will call clamped because we will use the clamp function for it. Let's do it here. Uniform bool to get a uh, checkbox. Clamped and initial value would be false. And its usage at the end of the fragment function right here. If clamped, eh, then do this. A result would be clamp of result in the range 0 and 1. Okay, nothing changed of course, because we need to turn it on in the inspector. Shader the parameters, clamped, clicking on on. There we go. And we can just turn it off if we like the more, the brighter version more. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the metaballs. We could try other improvements such as assigning each ball a different color and blending these colors upon merging, but that would probably make this video quite long. And I'd say that the result looks pretty good even in its current state. So I wish you a wonderful rest of 2024, a happy new year uh, 2025, and we'll see each other again in January.